to get. Cowboy hat would have been perfect. To cover my ears and my neck. Where my gloves go? I'm losing my mind. Oh, there they are. You guys, welcome to today's task. For today's task, we are back over here at my power inlet, we're gonna call it, I guess. We're gonna call this my power control section because that is what we're building today. <laughs> So a couple weeks ago, we fully got this installed. This is the pedestal for the transformer that's going to make my power for this property turn into two-phase power, which is what is coming into your homes um, if you're in like a subdivision or something like that. It's, that's what we're converting right here. But I need all my power set up so that it can receive it, which is my meter. Perfect. You guys, this is called a meter main. And if you notice, there's a little hole right here. If you notice, you noticed it, there's a hole. There's a hole right here is where your meter goes. That little dial on the outside of your house that says how much power you're using. It meters how much is coming from the grid into your home at a time. If you've watched National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation when he turns the lights on and the power grid starts spinning like crazy, that's his meter. That's how they tell how much to charge you for usage, a typical home is hooked up to handle 200 amps, typically, because most likely you're never gonna draw 200 amps at one full time, but it's capable of doing that. But since we are building the house and a shop, I wanted 200 amps for both. So class, if you have 200 and 200, you're pulling 400 amps. Good job, you guys, you're on top of these things. So this meter is set up to handle 400 amps so that I can split it and have multiple sub panels. That's probably a lot more information than you really wanted, but what I'm gonna show today is how we hook this guy up out here. So the city is going to come in and run power to that transformer. We've been over this, we know this, but then they have to run it somewhere else and up to your meter main is what they're responsible for. So from this dial all the way back to the grid is what whatever city or power source you're on, that's what they're responsible for from this dial to the house and buildings is what I, the homeowner, am responsible for. And that's how it works at your home as well. So if there's a malfunction from here out, you gotta pay for it. If there's a malfunction from here back, the city pays for it. But they don't pay for anything until you get hooked up and then they charge you to hook up. That's not gonna stay there. Costs to hook up. Let's talk about that just a little bit because you do have to buy your meter, you have to buy the wire, all that stuff going into your house, but you have to pay for everything coming up to your house as well as a one-time connection fee. Regardless of where you live and how you're connected to the grid, there is a connection fee. I don't know what it is typical in your areas or whatnot, but for mine, it was $750 just to connect their power to my power when they connect, right? So I can receive power, that's $750. But then they have impact fees, meaning how much am I going to impact the grid system um, determining on how much amperage I'm taking. So I'm calling for 400 amps, so my impact fees are higher. Super cool, right? Super fun. Those impact fees are roughly $2,500. So I had $2,500 and I had $750 just to connect. Now, the other half of that is I had to pay for all this conduit coming out here, and then I have to pay for all the wire coming in and the transformer because I'm connecting onto the grid. So I'm responsible for that to be installed and built. Once it's built and paid for, then it's the city's responsibility from here on out. But until then, I have to pay to bring it in. It's a connection, part of a connection fee. And that was roughly $8,000 just for um, a transformer and all the wire and labor that the power company is gonna come out and provide. Then on top of that, we had to pay for conduit and trenching it, which is why I did it because it was cheaper, but it was still very expensive. At $7 a foot for the piping and his labor to have him trench that and bury it, it was really, really expensive. So all in all, we are into this quite some money. So when you go and live kind of out in the boonies, it may be nicer, you may be all alone, but you're paying for that loneliness, not loneliness, you're paying for that isolation that you're trying to get. So just so you know, when you live out in the middle of nowhere, it costs more to bring power to you. So for about the past three months, my good buddy who's taught me everything I know about electrical installations has been sending me pictures of how other people have kind of set their main panel when it's going to be an outside panel. Most of these are attached to the outside of the house, but mine's gonna be kind of freestanding because 
one, the shop's not ready to hold it, and two, we need power for um, our contractors to work. So we're setting up an outdoor rated panel on a freestanding podium. You get it, you get it, you guys will see, you'll know. Here's a pro tip, when you're working with electrical, look for the square nosed tips because that's what most of these actually are. They'll have a square nose and a flat head. Some have Phillips, but really check for this because this will not strip as easy as the Phillips sets will or the flat head sets will. So. I really recommend using the right tool for the right job, especially with electrical work, because these are expensive, and if you screw them up, yeah, they're not really easy to replace. So that panel can slide all the way off. If you have ever wondered what it looks like inside your meter main, this is what it looks like. Pretty cool, huge lugs. I mean, these are massive, massive lugs. Tire panel can come off. This is what we call channel strut. It's got a channel with clips on the inside so that these little hooks can hold onto certain types of connectors and then it's perforated so you can bolt through it really easy. You don't have to drill a lot. This is excellent for connecting to um, anything electrical. All right, first thing I did is kind of get my channel set where it's roughly gonna go. Then I made some marks. I went up five inches and over four. Now I took my measurement off this side first because I wanted to make sure I was clearing any of these in case we use those later on. So I came up five inches, went over four inches. Same over on this side. Now we can drill them. Now we can bolt through here to the channel and there's special connectors that I'm gonna show you but I'm giving myself a few inches off of here and whatever we do here, I'll do the same up top so that the channel going down into the ground can sit here. This kind of channel, because of the little spikes that it has, you can use these really special clips that are meant to straddle the channel and then clip it really tight. And you can put them in this way if you need to from the top, or if you've got access on the side, you just slide them in. It comes with these little tabs right here. So you just set it flat in line and then you spin it. There you go. And now we're just gonna slide them into place. So now that it's lined up from above, Put a screw in. So I grab my nut driver and go to town. Now I don't want to cinch this down just too much because I do need to shift this around a little bit on this side. Here's where it's going to get fun because we got to send this one from the other side. Well, Joel, note to self do not over tighten them. Turn your drill down. The reason I'm doing this here on the trailer is one, so I can kind of line things up and build it as I go, and two, I'm a one man show. So. That's a little too loose. So our first piece is set, we're good to go. Now the reason I'm leaving so much length here is because other things might have to go here, but I know I'm not gonna use all 10 feet of that, but I definitely don't wanna cut anything off before I need to because I don't wanna be running out of space and then have to build onto it later on. That would be harder, I feel like. So go a little bit bigger and then I can cut it down later on the strut. We can just cut back on that some of it. Gone ahead and drilled up top as well and I measured down. I had to measure a little bit shorter, but I made the measurements first so that I could avoid all of the innards of this. Now we're ready to put our channel locks in. And we only got like a couple of cuts, so that's good. That is all the bolting I have to do on the inside of this panel. So for right now, I'm gonna put everything back in here and close it up and we're gonna be working on the outside from here on out. Oh, no we're not. No we're not. No, we're not. In the bottom of these panels, if you've ever noticed them, there's little rings sitting here. These are called knockouts. And what they do is they allow for connection of pipe. So we're gonna be putting three inch conduit up into here. So I'm gonna get that set so that it's just ready to, to put in already. Duh. This one will go here and I'm putting it up to measure because I've knocked out too many before and that's a bad deal. So I need to take out this one and the second one. And when it comes to knocking these out, I think channel lock or dikes are the best thing. There's one. Now the other one, it goes the opposite way. So we gotta be real careful.
we go. So that goes in there like so. And then you put this ring around it. Tighten that guy up. And then to secure it tight, you put your screwdriver on like that. And now it's seated super tight. Looks good, we're ready. Just to make things so that nothing decides to crawl up in here and make a nest, a little bird or something, we're gonna tape that up and cover that for right now. Now, the first side of the box we did over here on this side is power coming in. And then it's gonna come across the top, go in through these breakers, and then it's gotta come out. So, we're gonna set this one coming out. Same thing, ring goes over the top. This one's a little tighter. Take your screwdriver, put it on. Put a little duct tape on this guy. On the inside. Things are covered. Put a little on the outside too. Just so things stay super nice. And since I won't have to be back in here anymore for the next little bit, we're gonna just put it back together. And like all things, get them all started first. Then cinch them down, or else you'll never get some of them in. These screws are super cool. These are the last ones that go in. If you go out to your meter and look at it, to get into the meter section of it, there's a little wire clasp that'll have like a code or something, it's colored, and it's for your power company to identify that they were the last ones in there and that nobody's tampered with it. And so that is supposed to go through this to guarantee that nobody can tamper with it without undoing that. So, you see the little bitty hole in this little section right here? That's where they'll run their little kind of lock through. And that guarantees that nobody will access it. And there's even a spot for a bigger lock that I'll probably put on there as well. And for out here on this main panel as well so that they're locked so that my children don't get into them. So you guys, the rain is starting to come down a little bit harder, a little bit stronger. I do not want to be out here longer than I need to be. And it'll be a while before I get back here. So if you guys like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And we will finish this project in our next video. We'll see you guys. Make my power, it's going to make my power, gonna make the power, sorry, two phase property. Any rain? Nope. The typical household home um, on a uh, typical home has on, regardless of how you're for that piping and an outdoor rated J channel, not J channel, this isn't J channel. Oh, that's not good.